Hi everyone, my name is Kelsey. And my name is Becky. And we're the Sorry Girls. And today we're going to show you how to make some DIY lawn games and party games. Whatever your party reason may be, although I don't need a reason to party. <laughs> but whatever your reason is, we got you covered. And there may or may not be a pinata involved in this week's DIY. Filled with sweet tarts mini chewy because nothing says I'm the kind of adult you want to be friends with like eating these. And because this week's video is sponsored by sweet tarts mini chewy. Mm-hmm. So we should probably get to DIYing. I feel like we're missing something here for our summer lawn game. Yeah, maybe a lawn <laughs> in some summer. No way. Bring them in? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, soft grass, softest grass I've ever felt before. Much better. <laughs> okay, so uh, now we can get to DIY. All right, let's start with the first one. All right, so first up, we're gonna show you how to make this classic twister game. So with a little spin. A little spin. And a big one. Sure. Okay. So for our DIY twister game, we picked up a twin bed sheet to upcycle from the thrift store. We decided we wanted our dots to be eight inches wide, and so we cut that out of cardboard to use as a template. All right, next up involved a little bit of math, but don't worry, we already did that for you. So head to our blog link below to get all the math for how to space out the circles, if you're using the same bed sheet we are. So to summarize, we're basically marking out where the center of each circle will go. So when you go to put your template on to paint over it, you just put the template over the center of the dot we marked, and then it's easy. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. So now onto the fun part, which is the paint. The best part about this DIY is you can customize it to be literally any color scheme you want. We were inspired to do the colors purple, pink, yellow, and green. Um, I don't really know why, Me where neither. we got that from, but it looks good. Mm -hmm. Tastes good too. <laughs> With our template in place, a giant sponge, and some fabric paint on hand, we dabbed circle after circle to create a row of six circles of pink, six of purple, six of yellow, and six of green. Once your paint is dry, make sure to give the whole sheet a quick iron so that you can throw it in the wash if it gets dirty when you're playing with this outside. To make the spinner, we cut out a piece of foam core that was 16 inches by 16 inches. We found the center and poked a hole through it with an awl. Next, we took a giant popsicle stick and cut it into a pointed shape. For the spinning mechanism, we'll be using this post screw, which you can get from the hardware store. We drilled a hole through the popsicle stick that was slightly larger than the post screw so that it spun nicely. We then gave it a coat of pink paint, because why not? Insert the screw post through the hole, add the spinner, and then screw on the top to secure. Divide the spinner into four. So lastly, you could go ahead and just draw circled dots around the spinner like the traditional game is, but we wanted to add a fun snack element to this game because, I mean, who doesn't want a reason to snack? We added 16 little glasses around the perimeter of the spinner and add left hand, right hand, left foot and right foot onto the spinner. And use the Sweet Hearts Mini Chewy divided into the four colors on our mat to represent which color you need to put a hand or a foot on. Now this spinner is multifunctional and it's fun for anyone playing or anyone watching as well. Just make sure you don't eat all of them or else you won't know what color you're playing with. <laughs> Next up, we have a super cute emoji-inspired pinata. We're doing a peace sign because it's summer. Be at peace. <laughs> That's why. So to do this, you're going to gather some scrap cardboard, and the less folds that are in this cardboard, the better. You can download this peace sign template from our website. The sponsors already get it for free. Or you can draw out your own or literally any shape that you want. <laughs> Cut it out and then trace it onto your cardboard and do this twice. An optional tip is that if you're drawing your own shape, you can just trace this out straight onto the cardboard if you're feeling pretty good about your drawing skills. And then you can cut that out and then use that as a template. So you don't have to like pre-make a template. To cut it out, we used a box cutter and a cutting mat. Next, we cut out some strips of cardboard to go around the edges of our pinata. We we're doing this three inches wide and so that the curated lines of cardboard lay horizontally, which will make it a lot easier to fold later. Once you have some side pieces cut out, we're going to bend in order to curve around our shape and use some strong, sticky paper tape to hold our sides into place. Mm -hmm. 
add on the back of your peace sign and make sure to leave a part open at the top so that we can add in our candy later. Next comes the pinata fringe. Take a streamer color of your choice and then fold it in half a couple times in order to make this process way faster. Cut little slits along the streamer to create your fringe. To attach it to the pinata, all you need to do is apply a little white school glue. School glue. School glue. Liquid glue. Liquid glue. Add a little bit of liquid glue and then press it into place. When you've made it all the way around, start a new line and repeat. Repeat again and again until you have everything covered except for your flap at the top. This is when you can add in your candy. The Sweet Tarts Mini Chewy Candy actually works perfect as a pinata stuffer because they are small in size but full of an amazing sweet and tart flavor, which makes them a perfect party pleaser. Once your pinata is full of candy, we used an awl to poke two holes at the top center and then stringed in a string and tied a knot on the inside of the pinata. We then added duct tape to secure the area and finished covering that area with fringe. Our last step was to take a darker color of paint and outline the fingers and thumb. Just paint in the direction of the fringe for best results. Actually, our real last step was breaking open this pinata. All right, and our last DIY is going to be to show you how to make an easy to do giant Jenga. So to make this, you'll need seven two by fours that are eight feet long. So since this game works by stacking three blocks together that form a square when they're all aligned, we measured out how wide three of our two by fours were, and that ended up being about 10 and three quarters inches. So that's how long we're gonna cut our blocks. So mark out 10 and three quarters 54 times, and this will give us 54 blocks that make 18 rows of play. We're using a circular saw to cut down the straight lines again and again and again. You could do this by hand, but blessed power tools for making this so much easier for us. Once you have all your pieces cut, give them a quick sand to get rid of any splintery bits. It's also really important that you sand these blocks really well so that they're nice and smooth when you actually go to play this game and it's easy to move the blocks. This next step is totally optional, but you can seal, stain, paint, do whatever to your wood to give it some customizable flavor. We decided to paint some of our ends in a pink and some of them in blue. And your game is done and you're ready to play. So for anyone who doesn't know how to play this game, stack them in threes, alternating the direction each time, pull out blocks, and try not to make the tower fall. It's that simple. But watch your toes because this is giant and the blocks are heavy. And watch your floors too. Ideally do this outside. Right. Those wooden floors are on a carpet. Yeah, on a carpet. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's video to check out some fun party games for the summer. And thanks so much to Sweet Tarts Mini Chewy for sponsoring this video. Cheers to that. Cheers. Mm. Whatever you're celebrating this summer, let us know how you follow your tart and make sure to check out sweetheartscandy.ca for more on how to follow your tart. We'll be liking and commenting below. And speaking of liking, if you guys like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you love it, make sure you sub it. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.